stepping along with television. We certainly stepped in a hurry just now, all the way from Waukesha, Wisconsin, to a television studio in New York. Here are the lights, the cameras, the sound equipment, all typical of what you'd see at any of the several television broadcasting companies. Even so, it's a long, long way to Waukesha. How can these dancers leap like a sunbeam across 800 miles of hills and lakes and prairies? Well, let's see for ourselves. Starting in a New York studio, let's follow their performance along a pathway that turns a large chunk of our country into one tremendous stage. The cameras, of course, catch the action in terms of light and shade. They then translate it into electrical impulses which pass through small cables on the floor. These cables, in turn, lead to the control room overlooking the studio. Here we see technical men adjusting the television image. From this point on, the program is channeled into bell system wires, which now take over to carry the program on its journey. Riding on local telephone company facilities, the program speeds underground to a broadcasting tower and thence to the thousands of television sets throughout the metropolitan area. All at the same time, however, it is speeding underground to a telephone communications building many blocks away. Ah, here are the dancers again. We'll be seeing them quite often in other Bell System control rooms as we follow the program all the way to that living room in Waukesha, Wisconsin. A careful check on the image and the music, and we're really on our way. Underground, the program travels on a coaxial cable highway. Then, all in the twinkling of an eye, it drops off in Philadelphia. Here in the telephone building, we hurry along to another control room, where we again check in on the dancers. Incidentally, a line takes the program to the top of a television tower, whence it is broadcast locally. But in the meantime, and far quicker than it takes to tell it, it speeds on its way to Pittsburgh. Here, let's pause for a moment, just to watch the dancers and listen to the music. But now let's resume our journey westward. On to Cleveland and Toledo and Chicago. Here in Chicago, our coaxial cable highway takes us once more to the control room of a telephone building, and sure enough, the dancers are right here with us. Hmm, this lady might almost have stepped right out of a famous poem. A dancing shape, an image gay, to haunt, to startle and waylay. Up to now, the program has traveled on coaxial cable. New York to Chicago, all in the flash. Now in Chicago, we make an instant shift to another Bell System means of communication known as radio relay. Let's interrupt our journey here on the top of a telephone building in Chicago while we see what this radio relay is all about. This square-faced giant horn is an antenna for sending a special kind of radio wave. The antenna concentrates the radio waves into a very narrow beam, aimed straight as a rifle shot to a receiving tower. 
On top of this tower, a similar horn captures the signals and channels them through a hollow metal pipe to a series of amplifiers which build up their power. Restored to normal strength, the signals are now passed on through a sending antenna to a second radio relay tower. Here then, in essence, is what is known as radio relay. With the signals passed from one tower to another, over any distance that may be required. But let's return now to our television program as it's beamed from the top of a telephone building in Chicago. Thanks to Radio Relay, it's an easy trip northward to Milwaukee and to a receiving antenna on top of the local telephone building. Now down through the building to the control room and what do you know? The dancers again, and not the least bit tired from their long journey. But naturally, they came here almost on the wings of light. And now they simply ride up to a sending antenna zip over to a television broadcasting station and jump out in all directions. Among the many places they land, guess where? Waukesha, of course. Now it's easy. They're picked up on a television antenna on a certain house and the trip from the New York studio is finished. The time just about the 200th part of a second. I'll answer it, Mother. I think it's Jack. Hello? Is that you, Jack? Jack? Who's Jack? <laughs> this is your granddad calling from Boston. Grandpa? How wonderful. Mother, it's Gramps. Oh, Grandpa, you'll never guess what we're doing. We're watching a television program coming all the way from New York. Isn't that super? Oh, I don't know. How about me talking to you all the way from Boston? Oh, but Grandpa, this is really something. <laughs> Listen, honey, after what I've seen in the last 50 years, nothing surprises me anymore. <laughs> Fifty years. Yes, a lot has happened since Granddad, as a little boy, first jangled an old-fashioned telephone. In those days, it was a great event to talk on the telephone at all, let alone from Boston to Waukesha, Wisconsin. Then from his window in Boston, he saw the sky full of wires. Later on, the wires began to disappear into cables not much bigger than a man's wrist carrying more conversations to more and more places. Until finally, the long distance telephone network of today came into being. In the same way, Grandpa saw wires for carrying radio programs grow from nothing, only 25 years ago, to the present nationwide special network over which the Bell system regularly carries programs to more than a thousand local stations owned by broadcasting companies. Recently, Grandpa has been hearing a lot about coaxial cable and radio relay. How they're good for carrying both telephone conversations and television programs. You may think that's remarkable, but not Grandpa. Say, I've been expecting things like this for more than 20 years. You see? <laughs> Nothing surprises Granddad anymore. So if he should look at a map of Bell System television networks as they are today, he'd probably tell you it's just history repeating itself. Even now, six terminal cities and eight others in between are connected on a network extending from the Atlantic seaboard to the Mississippi River, making it possible for millions of people to be eyewitnesses of scenes as far as 1,500 miles away. What's more, the Bell system will keep on stepping along with television 
as fast as the requirements of the television industry are clearly demonstrated. Considering Bell System history, this is no pipe dream. Pipe dream? Of course not. Why, if you ask me, it's just plain logical.